In this video, we take a look at the iOS 14.3 release candidate. It has really cool features like this new animated playlist headers, among many other changes. Let's see what's new. So before we get into it, let me just start off by saying that the new handoff experience between the HomePod mini and the iPhone using the U1 chip is not yet available. I've tried the latest HomePod mini beta and it doesn't work just yet but that should be coming before the end of the year according to Apple's keynote. We'll see what happens. We'll definitely keep you updated. So I've installed the 14.3 release candidate, so let's see what's new and improved. First of all, let's start off with the release notes in the settings app. So let's head over there and you can see iOS 14.3, it advertises the new Fitness Plus functionality. It advertises compatibility with the new AirPods Max. If you haven't already, be sure to check out Miles's excellent roundup of the AirPods Max. And of course there's Apple Pro Raw support for the iPhone 12 Pro, but there's lots more that has been finalized in this release candidate. So you have the playlist artwork that is now animated with full bleed headers at the top. Now I checked a lot of the different playlists and I found some more like beat instrumentals. This one is really awesome. Look at how much animation is there. It reminds me of the Lo-Fi Chilled Cow YouTube channel. What do you guys think? Do you listen to Chilled Cow by the way? Thumbs up if we got any Chill Cow fans in the house. You also get happy hits, and you can see that animation there. If you're not feeling happy, you're feeling mellow, then don't worry, Apple Music got you covered. So notice the animated window with the cloud cover. It's a nice vibe that these animated playlist headers give you with that full bleed edge to edge coverage on your iPhone. So here's today's chill. You also have Always Sunday, and no doubt there's probably more. If you found any more, let me know down below in the comments section. Now, one of the cool things is that you do get animation when you have a playlist downloaded to your library, but notice no full bleed, so th that's kind of a bummer. Now, as mentioned in the release notes, iOS 14.3 will support Apple Fitness Plus. That is, of course, Apple's upcoming streaming fitness service that it announced back at its September event. And this service will be launching in just a few days on December 14th. So on that date, Apple Fitness Plus will automatically appear as a new tab in the fitness app on the iPhone. So Fitness Plus will feature 10 of the most popular workout types like cycling, high intensity interval training, dance, and more. So while this won't be a Peloton killer, at least initially, it will have its advantages like the deep Apple Music integration. So on December 14th, right here in the fitness app, you'll see a new Fitness Plus tab. Look for it. So Fitness Plus is included with the Apple One Premier subscription, which costs $29.95. Otherwise, you can get it for $10 a month or $80 a year. And just from comparing this release candidate to the last beta, we can tell that the pieces are starting to fall into place. For instance, under analytics and improvements, under privacy, you see the improved fitness plus toggle that has been fully fleshed out. No more lorem ipsum text there describing what that does. And in Safari, you can set Ecosia as your default search engine. And of course, Ecosia is the search engine that donates 80% or more of its profits towards reforestation efforts. So if you wanna set that as your default search engine, go to settings, Safari, search engine, select Ecosia, and that's it. What do you guys use for your default search engine? Would you consider switching? So for the longest time, Apple Music has been sort of burdened by this weird UI for video playback. So whenever you played a music video, it just didn't look like the rest of iOS. Well, starting with iOS 14.3, that is no more. Now you get the default video interface in the music app, just like the rest of iOS. So let's grab the old version and compare it with the new version. You're gonna see the old version actually has a really interesting UX as well. So whenever you tap on the, the video, you see it automatically goes into landscape mode, sort of forcing you into that mode, but you don't have to worry about that on iOS 14.3. Apple Arcade is filled with tons of games and that can actually make it a little bit challenging to find the game that's right for you. But in iOS 14.3, Apple has implemented additional filters to make it a little bit easier to go in and filter the games in order to find what you're looking for. So if we tap the filter at the top, now you can filter by release date, last updated, you can filter by name, category, you can even filter by controller support or multiplayer support, even app ratings. So that's gonna make it easier. If you're looking for a game that supports the controller, 
you can do that. If you're looking for a game within a, a specific age range, you can do that as well. So look how easy that is. And it's all sorted by release date, as you can see here, which is really cool, right? Now, if you tap the little button in the upper right hand corner, you can condense this, hide those big previews, and there you get an easier to digest list of games. And on the iPhone 12 Pro, you get people detection in the magnifier app. So if I go to accessibility, see magnifier, I have that enabled. So now I'm gonna swipe over to the app. You can find it on your home screen or in your app library. Of course, magnifier allows you to zoom in and literally magnify stuff. But in iOS 14.3, you now get the ability to enable people detection that uses the LiDAR sensor. So if I go over here, it's going to recognize that a person is in view. So it tells you how far away that person is. So I'm about four feet away, not far enough to stay socially distant. I need to be six feet away. So I probably need to back up a little bit, but I don't have enough clearance. So I'm just gonna have to work with what I got here. Five, six feet, close enough, right? And that is people detection. Now in iOS 14.3, you can finally enable PAL video formats for 25 frames per second video capture. So if I go into settings, go into camera, go into record video, you can see I have 4K 24 frames per second, 1080p 24 frames per second, but I can enable the show PAL format switch and now I get 25 frames per second PAL video format. So this is a video format used in countries in Africa and Europe and in Asia. But PAL is an encoding method for analog systems. And most countries have already transitioned over to digital or are in the process of doing so. Maybe some of our European friends can chime in. And there's also an update to the TV app. You're gonna notice some updates to the spacing between the various little cells on screen. But the real significant update has to do with the search interface, which adopts an Apple Music-like layout. So you have all these various categories that allow you to sort of drill down and find, uh, you know, within the ballpark of what you may be looking for. For instance, kids and family, if you're looking for something family-friendly, you can go there. Or if you're looking for instance, Apple TV plus content, yeah, you're gonna find it all there. So this helps you drill down a little bit in case you don't know exactly what you're looking for. There's also Apple News Plus audio updates. So let's tap the audio tab. One of the things you're gonna notice is that the truncated text for the titles of your Apple News Plus audio articles is no longer a thing. So you see on the left side, the old method where it would take, well, basically the text just wouldn't fit within the interface, but now that has been resolved. You also get the option to just read the story. If you don't wanna listen to it, well, now you see a read story link on the updated iOS 14.3. Whereas if you tap on the article on the old version, it'll just start playing it. So if I tap read story, Oops, it kind of went away because I tapped the other phone. It synced together. All right, so I tap read story and there I can read that article if I want to. Of course, I can still listen to it if I want to as well, but it's nice to have options. Now, another thing you'll find is if you scroll all the way down, yeah, you'll see an Apple News Plus audio channel. You tap on that and then all these articles are going to be audio articles. So you can actually listen to those articles instead of reading them. And there's various categories at the top. You can drill down even further. For instance, if you wanted to listen to articles within the science and technology section, you can do that. And you can also subscribe or unsubscribe to this channel as well. And it's its own standalone Apple News channel. So I've made a couple of videos about the set wallpaper shortcut action returning in iOS 14.3. You can see how, what I've done here to set up dynamic wallpaper. So whenever I'm charging my iPhone, the wallpaper changes. I plug it back in, watch what happens. Plugged it back in and the wallpaper dynamically changes just like that. That is really cool in my opinion. What do you guys think? Let me know if you wanna know how to do that just watch our full tutorial video. But the whole thing revolves around set wallpaper, which is an action in the shortcuts app that's been added back in iOS 14.3. So you can see I've created this shortcut. Basically it goes out to my photo library, finds the wallpaper album, pulls one of those photos in, and then sets the wallpaper using the set wallpaper action. And I have this thing running whenever I plug my iPhone in to power or whenever it's charging, for instance, it's gonna change wallpaper dynamically. 
and there are also home app updates. So if you go into the home settings, you're gonna find a new software update section that has been revamped. So now not only will you be able to toggle HomePod updates on or off within this section, but the wording indicates that you're gonna be able to, to update all of your HomeKit enabled devices directly from the home app. So you no longer have to necessarily use standalone apps to provide those updates to your HomeKit enabled devices, which is really cool. And then last but not least, Apple Pro Raw support for the iPhone 12 Pro and 12 Pro Max. You'll find that in settings, camera, formats. You'll see Apple Pro Raw along with the other two formats, high efficiency and most compatible, which is just normal JPEG. But now you get a linear DNG Apple Pro Raw format, which is extremely handy for those that take iPhone photography seriously. So in the upper right hand corner of the camera app, enable Raw under the Photos tab and that allows you to shoot, as you can see, a raw photo. But you may be wondering to yourself, what's the big deal? Yeah, it looks the same as a normal photo, right? Not so quick. Of course, you can go in and edit that photo right there from within the camera app, just like any other photo. But let me turn off Apple Pro Raw, take another photo, and compare those two. Now, you're not gonna be able to really see the differences here. Let's hop over to Affinity Photo. Here is the normal photo. And here's the raw photo. Now these have been zoomed in 800% just to show you the detail. And you can really spot the differences. You see not nearly as much processing on the raw file, which gives you much more flexibility in post. Notice the aggressive sharpening and processing on the standard photo compared to the raw. So raw lets you keep more information, more dynamic range. It gives you more flexibility to edit in post to adjust things like exposure, white balance, the list goes on. Highly recommended if you're an iPhone 12 user to shoot with Apple Pro Raw. So that has been a look at iOS 14.3. What are your thoughts? Let me know down below in the comments section and thumbs up if you appreciate this video and be sure to subscribe for more videos like this. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.